And so, yeah, welcome everybody. This is Paul Stacy, the executive director of the Open Education Consortium. Um, welcome to the Pilot Projects webinar. I thought um, having received significant expressions of interest from around the world in the Pilot Projects, I thought it'd be useful to, to do a webinar to kick things off um, and talk about the notion of the projects, the origin of them, um, what happened in terms of putting out a call for expressions of interest, and then, and then talk a little bit about next steps associated with moving them forward. So I've prepared a bit of a presentation here. So let me, let me move to my presentation. So uh, in terms of origin, um, these were ideas that were brought forward at our Open Education Global Conference, which happened in Delft in the Netherlands. This is a large international conference that brings together open education practitioners and advocates from around the world once a year. It moves around to different places in the world every year. Um, but uh, at this event, lots of people, including Paul, who's here with me in this uh, webinar today, approached me and suggested ideas for initiatives that would be useful for the Open Education to Consortia to support. And so um, there were quite a number of ideas that were pitched at me actually during the event. And out of all of them, I picked three that I thought would have global significance to people around the world. Um, one was a fellowship exchange. And the basic idea for this one was brought forward by Tian Balawadi, who's actually uh, from uh, the Indonesia Indi Open University, but also is on the Open Education Consortia's board of directors. Um, and the basic idea of this one is to really acknowledge that there's a lot of expertise that exists within the Open Education Consortium member base. We have 240 some odd members from 44 countries around the world. And all of them have significant expertise related to open education, but in different areas. And so the notion here is to see whether members would like to host other members and transfer knowledge from one to another so that that expertise gets built up across the entire organization. And the basic idea would be that some, there'd be some uh, facility to enable the visiting persons or people to uh, to actually work with the host and receive a certain amount of remuneration for providing work, but in in exchange uh, receive knowledge that they could take back to their home institution. So this is one idea for a fellowship, and I'll talk about the response to it in just a minute. Um, Paul, who's with us here on the webinar, brought forward the. Uh, the idea of doing an open anatomical atlas, and I'll give Paul a chance to talk about this a little bit later, but basically the, the core idea is to have people around the world who are interested in, in um, and have a responsibility often for teaching anatomy and physiology to collaborate on the co-creation of an openly licensed anatomical atlas of high quality anatomy images. I think this is a really interesting idea, Paul. Thanks for bringing it forward. And, and I must say that of all of the pilot project ideas the three that were brought forward, this one has generated the largest interest. And then Wait, the last... But the first image is already there. <laughs> and the last one um, had to do with translation of open education resources. And, and of course, as you probably all know, a lot of open education resources now exist, but primarily in English. And so um, the idea to be explored here is uh, how might we engage students in uh, translating um, open education resources from one language to another and or automation because there's uh, certainly one of the responses uh, in terms of expressions of interest it brought forward an actual tool that can, that can be used to, to translate open education resources. So these were the three uh, pilot project ideas. Uh, here's the response of so 58 expressions of interest from 16 different countries and and one of the exciting things from my point of view was that when people expressed interest they also brought forward various things that they could contribute to the project some of them have already been working on this for a while and have uh, made some progress and so it's fantastic to see a starting pool of existing resources that can help move these things forward 
And then here you can see the breakdown of expressions of interest across the three projects, 19 from eight countries for fellowship exchange, 36 from 12 countries for open anatomical atlas, and 16 from 10 countries for OER translation. And so uh, that, so uh, we put out the call for expressions of interest in June and we kind of left it open until the end of July just to assess whether, you know, there was interest. And I actually, you know, that level of interest, this level of interest is actually good from my point of view. That's, a, um, that's more than enough to kind of get things kickstarted. And I, I think for, for me, the, um, the critical piece then becomes, well, to what extent are people really seriously interested in working together because of course it takes time and energy and uh, effort to collaborate with others across boundaries and countries to make progress on initiatives like this. But from an open education consortium point of view, um, we decided to move forward and take some next steps. And so for each of the three pilot projects, uh, I took the time to kind of aggregate all of the expressions of interest into one document and provide the names and uh, locations and institutions that people are from in terms of uh, where they work inter uh, related to these pilot projects and also offered up some suggestions for um, the kind of key planning questions that might need to be considered by all of the people who are interested to successfully move forward with with the project. Um, we also have put in place on our Slack uh, technology platform channels for each of the three pilot projects and invited the people who expressed interest to join those channels and the idea here would be to enable there to be some dialogue and discussion amongst all of those who are interested to help move forward these projects in a coordinated way and to engage people in in uh, in the actual planning process and who's going to do what um, from an oec point of view our role is this, I'm sort of seeing us currently as a participant, for sure. We're definitely here wanting to help engage and move these projects forward. Um, we're kind of acting as a coordinating body, providing some facilitation, matchmaking. And some, of, some people have asked us about funding. Uh, for ICR role, we have obviously allocated some funding to help support these projects, but we cannot fund the actual work involved in doing them all. Uh, but nonetheless, if there was a need identified by the people participating in the pilot projects for funding to get this work uh, to move forward, then we would be happy to help contribute to that process of application for funding and be a, a party at the table. So that's, that's the set of next steps that, that we took. Um, and then this webinar is kind of the next step after that to kind of uh, help create some uh, awareness of what the projects are, the interest in them, and in the documents, the planning documents, as I mentioned, there were some suggestions from our side on what the participants might want to think about in terms of moving their pilot project forward. So on the fellowship exchange, um, um, the expressions of interest came from people who were interested in being hosted. So some people have a need, an area of expertise that they'd like to acquire, and others expressed interest in being a host. So they already have expertise that they're willing to help others acquire. So that's great because we kind of need to have both sides of that equation in order to enable some fellowship exchange. And I know that the originator of this idea, Tian, um, had also had some experience uh, with the Asian Association of Open Universities Fellowship Exchange. And so I've brought forward in the uh, Slack channel for this particular pilot, the template that's used for the fellowship exchange by that organization as a sort of uh, draft format for how an open education consortia fellowship exchange might work. Um, but my, my hope would be that the participants can um, quickly kind of agree to uh, follow a basic process and I think the one that's in the Asian Association of Open Universities uh, template is fine um, and then try one out and see how it works and I think if we started small uh, and looked to build over time uh, this could be a really successful project. Uh, for the Open Anatomical Atlas um, here's a, a quick little list of some of the things that people 
brought forward a set of what I am thinking of as starting resources uh, and really quite a diverse um, and very interesting. And I, to be honest, I was quite impressed, Paul. I don't know how you felt, but I, I was pretty impressed with the, the diversity of the tools and the level of progress that different people had made on certain aspects of creating such an anatomical atlas. Of course, the challenge from my point of view becomes, well, so when we say uh, open anatomical atlas, what's the scope, you know, how comprehensive is it? And then how might those existing resources fit together? Uh, what remains to be developed? Because so some pieces are there obviously, but some aren't. And then when we say Atlas, are we talking about a book? Um, what is the form factor for, for the deliverable, if you will? And if it is a book, then um, both Una and I have had some preliminary conversations with, with uh, Hugh McGuire, who is the person behind Press Books, the, the open platform for authoring books, um, textbooks, and... Uh, also, Rebus, the, the online community that supports the production and project management aspects of having a group collaborate on creating an open textbook. And, uh, and that might be an appropriate platform, if you will, for authoring a collaborative atlas if it really is to be a book. And then lastly, for the OER translation one, uh, one of the things that was brought forward was that uh, certainly one of the people, Tannis Morgan, has already established a collection of multilingual OER, so OER in different languages. Um, and others like Werner Westermann in Chile uh, are engaged currently in having open textbooks from OpenStax be translated from English into Spanish for his his target audience. So there are already some efforts underway in this in this area of translation and um, and Davor brought forward his work on Translexi, which is a, a tool, a web-based tool that can automate the translation of education texts and documents. So it's good to see again some starting points for this particular initiative. Um, in my view, this is kind of about supply and demand. Um, by which I mean, if we're talking about translating open education resources, what is the demand side of the equation? You know, what OER needs to be translated? Who has a use case and a need for a particular body of open education resources that isn't in their language, but if it was in their language, would be really useful? Um, and, and so I, that often is the missing equation from a piece of the equation from my point of view. You know, there's lots of interest in in supply, but not always uh, an awareness of the demand side. So what OER needs to be translated and what, what, what language does it need to be translated into, I think are critical questions. And then what's the process for translation? I will say that of all the expressions of interest in this particular pilot project, the biggest area of interest seemed to be in having uh, materials in Spanish, which I think is a good thing, it gives it sort of a focus. Um, so those, that's kind of my quick, long sort of summary, short summary, I guess, um, but a kind of high-level summary of, of the three pilot projects and uh, the expressions of interest, where we're at, sort of uh, next steps going forward. Really, the next steps re reside now in the participants themselves, and, and I wanted to say a couple of things. One is... Um, it was great to get the level of interest that we got, but um, by no means uh, do I think that that's all the people who are really interested. And so we've left the call for participants open, and if more people want to participate, they're welcome to. Um, there's a post on the Open Education Consortium website talking about the pilot projects that just went up um, this week. Uh, that includes a link to the form where people can continue to express interest in joining one or more of these. Um, and then in the process of, of uh, people working on them together, I think it's going to continue to be important for people to, to talk about what they have that can help these projects move forward um, and to identify a role that they might want to play. And to think about these projects in this way, which is, you know, what is it that together uh, a collaborative effort like this can achieve that an individual can, or an institution on its own can't achieve? Because 
Uh, if, if it's just to achieve something small that any one of you could achieve, then I'm not sure that will be motivation enough to keep the team together, to keep the group together and have it be focused on making progress. I really think that, um, you know, you'll have to kind of have a scope of effort and an ambition to do something that is, that is larger than what you yourself can accomplish on your own. Um, and with that, I'm going to stop talking, actually, and uh, invite um, Paul and anyone else on this call who's here with us uh, in person to talk about their interest. I know Paul's interest is in the Open Anatomical Atlas. Others may have an interest in other uh, pilot projects, but uh, I'd welcome now some discussion among those who are here on the webinar about these pilot projects, uh, how they see themselves being involved, and uh, what they'd like to see accomplished. So let me stop share and just stop talking myself. And so, Paul, why don't I invite you to speak first about the Open Anatomical Atlas, which I'm so excited that has generated such great interest. And, and uh, I know you prepared some materials that you've posted in Slack. I saw that this morning. Thank you for that. I think that'll be really useful. Why don't you talk a little bit about some of what you've put in those? Thank you very much, Paul. And uh, I'm uh, delighted and honored that you uh, gave this opportunity for this uh, project. Um, I recognize as fellow anatomist uh, Mike, uh, his name. Uh, hi, <laughs> so you can hear me, great. And um, uh, I think the other people, I'm not sure uh, whether people are interested in anatomy part or in other um, uh, parts or just general OEC. Um. <laughs> Everyone's interested in anatomy, Paul. Yes. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead and talk about it. Do you know idea. anything about the, the, the people that um, have uh, subscribed uh, to, but that can't be here, that they say, okay, um, I, I like to participate, but I can't, I can't join in here? Yeah, some of the people have sent that, uh, just in terms of it being not a good time for them. So I, I do think that the interest remains high, Paul, and I think that, um, you know, part of what we're trying to do is kind of enable communication about it in different formats and different channels to kind of reach people as much as we can. Fantastic. Yeah, it's always difficult to, you must point to point a moment. So let me please, uh, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity. I uh, made a little presentation, so I'll be free to uh, share my screen, if you don't mind. Sure, go ahead. Uh, now I must have a look where... where um, oh, uh, a beautiful water shot. Yes, that's uh, Croatia. Mm -hmm. uh, now I hope it's... Uh, yes, it's there. <laughs> I always like hearing people think out loud. Uh, <laughs> there um, we go. Good. Okay. Um, why is it? Why am I seeing only half the screen? Why is it going there? Uh, can I move this to the side? To make it, yeah, that's great. Okay, so thank you. So I um, actually I'm already busy with this for a couple of years with this idea. It came up years ago, and I already did a couple of uh, uh, starting initiatives for it. And so um, the ideas that I like to share is uh, first, why do we need it? Uh, then how could we uh, uh, reach it? And uh, uh, what kind of things are already uh, there? You already showed uh, some of them. Um, so the plan is actually to create an open anatomical atlas with quality controlled illustrations, but with an open creative, creative, creative Commons license. And why do I think we need it? Well, you already said it, they are key for anatomical learning and teaching um, as a basic discipline for all medical uh, sciences. And teaching anatomy, well, you really can describe it. You can say it goes left, it goes right, it goes up, goes down. It's large, it's small, it's gray, it's green, but you need to see it. So uh, <laughs> seeing is, 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 is everything. Um, and then you can say, okay, but there's a wells, go to the web, there's a wells of anatomical images, but the problem is uh, the images that are there are nearly all copyrighted. So there are uh, lots of atlases, textbooks, uh, but they're copyrighted. They are used within uh, campuses usually, um, but within the campus constraints, they are, are licensed and not even all the uh, campuses, we don't have a license actually. Um, and there are thousands of images on the web, but they're either, I think, 
95% is pirated. They, they, they don't belong on the web. They're not, not they're copyrighted or they're old, out of copyright from one old anatomical book, 80 years old, uh, or they're uh, not very detailed or they have anatomical mistakes or uh, you can sh see them, that's useful, but they're not allowed to reuse. So actually, there are very few good quality anatomical images with a real Creative Commons open license. And it gives a couple of troubles um, for the teachers. Um, if you make, uh, try to make uh, open educational resources, you try to make teaching on the web, you need open images. We made a MOOC and we bumped into that very hard. Uh, another problem, if you do the web lectures, now, nowadays everything is recorded and they put on, on, on the local uh, institutional uh, learning platform, but it's regarded as, as a publication. And so it's a little bit tricky. Uh, we all put copyrighted images in there, but it, it's, it's tricky. And um, teachers probably don't, some, uh, we don't have a, a license access only to, to a few. So presumably a lot are used illegal. And I've heard already from uh, one uh, example where a teacher, for an anatomist, got a, a 5,000 euros fine for putting uh, pictures uh, in, in, in a presentation. So uh, that makes people anxious, at least not, there are some people anxious. Not, it's not a mass problem yet, but um, it can be. Well, for the students, um, even our students in, 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 in our part of the country uh, or of the world, which is a rich part of the world, most of them don't buy an anatomical atlas just because of the financial barrier. And uh, in less wealthy countries, it's even a bigger problem. Um, if you look to Wikipedia, it has great, uh, lots of anatomical uh, um, uh, topics, but the imagery is, is, is still uh, uh, poor. Uh, it's mostly these black and white pen drawings from this one anatomy book uh, from 1918 that's copyright has expired. You know, probably know the Grey's Anatomy uh, uh, video uh, series, film series, it's called after this, uh, this main uh, basic book of anatomy. It's, 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 it's the basic of, of, of uh, old anatomists. Um, so, and students, they don't use atlas, it's just, just search online. But these problems, yeah, they have the problems, they are pirated, um, anatomical errors, and the students don't even, uh, are not even able to distinguish. Sometimes I get pictures and they show me uh, some anatomical structure and I say, okay, but that's from a cat, that's not from, from a human, and they just don't recognize, or they're just outdated. Hey, Paul, just, be, just before, just be, can I ask you a question as you go along? Yeah. If I do too long, uh, I, I'll, I'll go faster. <laughs> I just have a question for you about uh, the absence of good quality images in Wikipedia. Um, that seems to me that that opens up an opportunity to actually approach Wikipedia about this project. Sure. I mean, as, as you know, the Wikipedia does uh, other initiatives uh, in areas where they're lacking good imagery. So the the Wikipedia loves loves monuments, for example, being an example of a project where they sought images from from really the you know anyone who who would help provide good pictures of uh, significant monuments and uh, historical buildings and statues and so on of interest to supplement what's in the Wikipedia article. And do you think that's worth doing? And if so, it might be something that I could bring forward or take forward in terms of contacting Wikipedia. It's absolutely uh, a, a great opportunity to uh, investigate it. Mm -hmm. The only um, uh, uh, reservation or doubt is that I have that so far the uh, uh, starting project that I did with um, getting open anatomical atlases, um, I'm already quite happy if I get them licensed under a, a Creative Commons non-commercial uh, license. That's already quite a, a challenge. Sure. And that uh, doesn't uh, work together with Wikipedia. So it's, it's, it, it's definitely a, a way to investigate. And it might be the case that if there's a, a large backing from the OEC consortium and from Wikipedia, and there's funding that, that brings artists over the um, the threshold to say, okay, maybe then that's that's so interesting that I'm willing to drop the non-commercial um, uh, attack. But mm -hmm. that's the only, um, uh, um, yeah, question okay. mark in my head. Okay, interesting. Yeah, and I see Mike has posted a link to um, the wiki project for anatomy that uh, has already been done. So interesting. Thanks, Mike. Go ahead, Paul. Sorry. Okay. Um, 
shall I continue in this way or yeah, uh, do please, you want... no, keep going okay so basically I've got the feeling anatomy it's so uh, basic for, for us human beings we know the knowledge for hundreds years years already it's uh, I, I'm uh, up, uh, frustrated by the fact that we still have to pay and have don't have good access to 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 images it should be anatomy should be open in, in, in my my opinion so um, what um, should be in the atlas um, well there's a listing of, of things that you can think of and that were mentioned in the talks uh, uh, in the mill, mills uh, before by several people. So it's first of all, I thought of, of drawings. Uh, then you've got the section photos and videos, uh, microscopy slides, radiological images, uh, 3D anatomical models, uh, surgical operation photos and videos, animations, etc. cetera. Um, well, I think everything is needed. Um, but I also think, uh, let's see where the, the hardest need is and what's most frequently used. And let's not repeat things that are already there. So if we look at um, the section photos, I saw this blue link collection indeed. Uh, that looks very nice. Um, so it's, it's, it's still a little bit difficult accessible, I think, but it's, it's, it's great. Um, the same thing is for the, the microscopy slides. And for the radiological images, there's already a real fantastic uh, website that, that, that has everything that you want, uh, Creative Commons licenses, uh, a huge uh, user group and contribution group, uh, Radiopedia. Um, so I think all these things are, 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 are good and useful, but I think we should add to things that are there and not try to redo them uh, again. Um, actually, my experience as, as a teacher is that the Artists uh, created drawings, which are yeah might seem old-fashioned, just simple uh, colored drawings, um, but they are the ones that are most used, uh, just simply used. P people search the image on the web, uh, people want, just want to know what the structure is. Um, and I don't know, uh, I only know one little collection, but not a comprehensive, big, open, creative uh, uh, um, uh, co comments collection um, and I think they have an advantage to these other things that they add a didactic factor so they can uh, stress and clarify things by removing unnecessary detail highlighting uh, putting things you really need that in teaching and then other advantages they have little technical requirements so they you can uh, in all parts of the world you can put them on the mobile phone they are uh, you can put them in, in paper they can be distributed and used widely so um, I also investigated a little bit. Um, it's it's not uh, by far not 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 complete this investigation. It's it's work in progress. Uh, there are a couple of dozens of of sites that I investigated for uh, materials that it it has. Here's the URL. Um, so it, there is some stuff already there, but most stuff that there's there is. Uh, um, either just open access, but not open reuse, and really open reuse and quality control is only a, a few. The neuroanatomy site, this radiological site, a uh, few that I, I am aware of. So um, my thing that, that I think is, is needed most, but people might disagree, um, I think everything is needed, and I think in, in the end we must go to um, to collecting everything and to, to, to giving access to everything. It does not need to be on one place, but make it able, able to, to find easily. But I think the thing that is, 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 is needed most, at least in my, my experience, um, is simply the artist drawn quality controlled licenses, but because they are still uh, really controlled by, by the copyrighted atlases. And uh, it's not a thing that you can build in your own. So if you say uh, it's not for small projects, well, I, I, I counted the number of uh, images in the atlases. It's approximately 1,000 per atlas. Uh, an atlas uh, takes, or an image takes 1,000 to $2,000 uh, to make. So it's you're, you're counting $2 million uh, to create such a thing. So it's not a thing that one department can, uh, can do or one person can do. So how could it... Uh, be done well. This is my idea of how it could be done. Um, this is just a concept. Uh, my idea is take a little group of medical artists that you can start to work with, with anatomy, anatomists of uh, dozens of institutions, um, give these artists access to the section labs because I think one of the comments that I got from a, a great anatomist he said ah we're all copying the same images with the same errors and really original images that's the only thing that that's high quality um, 
funding. I think that can be also from the institutions or try to find funding. But if we have such a thing as the Open Education Consortium behind it, that might definitely help and the kind of coordination. And my idea is you need both the artists to draw, the anatomists to determine which uh, uh, images are to be made in which order, to coach the artist and to review them. So it's it's not just the funding that uh, we need, we definitely need the anatomist because that's just as much work from my experience as drawing it. The artists can often do it faster than the anatomists have time to, to coach it. So you really need a, a large couple of universities with anatomists there uh, willing to uh, give some time because it's really time consuming to make a good uh, image. And then in the planning, so you need, first of all, a list, so of images, these are, we're going to create these ones, uh, contributing institutions, funding, a curation, a platform, um, and what, with what, which ones can you collaborate? Well, um, a list of images to create, um, you, you can go on several levels of detail and quality, or you can say, I go region by region. I think it's good to uh, make a plan and uh, not do everything, at the, not to start everywhere, but for instance, to do one region and to do that completely and then to show off, okay, so this is what it is. People come there to the place, they can't find the images they see. Okay, I, I, I won't come there in vain because if it's an image from that region, let's say the thorax, I'll always find an image. And then that gives raises interest and other people will say, okay, if it works for the thorax, let's do the arm or the leg or, or the head or whatsoever. Um, and Paul, you also said, uh, I, I was first focusing on the top quality images because these are the most difficult to access, but you rightly uh, appointed me, okay, but we, uh, you need images in different level of detail and quality. Um, so I think that that's, that's right. Um, I don't know how to organize to, to prioritize, but I think it's, it's right. Um, in a prior project, I had already been making a little bit categorization how can you see uh, yeah how much an image should cost uh, also what yeah, for the funding you needed and i didn't think of this myself but you, you can do it in you can categorize anatomical images in three quality levels uh graphical schematic graphical plastic and high quality and regarding to the extent these are the people that sorted these categories and i made a little uh, imagery so this is the the, the most simple uh, category uh, it's uh, named by the people who, who, who made the category as graphical schematic. It's, it's just line drawings, it's easy, uh, uh, not uh, flat colors, uh, no, no gradients, hard border lines. It's very useful to explain basic anatomy. And you see three categories, this is as little uh, amount of uh, detail and more uh, detail, more elements uh, from left to right. Then the next uh, uh, quality level, um, is what they call graphical plastical. So it has some shadows, it has some gradients, it has some nicer colors, colors, but large areas are not elaborated in detail. So you see here, this is not elaborated. It's just about this, this thing. Um, the, the, the item is often shown in isolation. It's also great for basic anatomy, uh, for patient information. Um, it's, it's, it's not as uh, uh, sufficient for the, the real medical student, but for a lot, it's, 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 it's useful. And the last category is the real high quality category with details elaborated, lots of details, uh, nicely colored, nicely textured, nicely shadowed. Uh, this is be both beautiful artwork and high academic quality work because you must imagine all these relations, there are dozens, of structures here and all the relations it's left right it's above top it's front must uh, be correct uh, towards each other so there are thousands of relations between structures in in here you don't see it directly but it's it's huge academic uh, work from uh, yeah, the, the most renowned uh, artist uh, in the anatomy uh, net or um, from the previous uh, age so um i think the first thing is we must think okay which images and in which order and at which quality level um, then to get it done, we need contributing institutions, we need funding and curation. And yeah, I think that fits perfectly and actually is the only possibility to do it with a group of universities uh, or institutions um, under such an umbrella of uh, open educational consortium, such a big uh, neutral uh, organization. I think that's the only way to get it done. Um, then a platform to publish, a book might be a good idea actually i also think you must do it on the web um we already um <clears throat> uh, i would like to introduce 
a platform that actually uh, uh, we developed by Dutch anatomists, Dutch and Flemish anatomists. Um, I should have put Flemish here too. Uh, with a grant of the Dutch Ministry of Education, we developed a platform specifically designed and dedicated to open anatomy, anatomy learning resources. So this is the page on images, but there's also documents, videos, etc., and they are searchable by region. Uh, uh, system well it's not completely uh, filled in the taxonomy behind this, the scenes so it's not perfectly working yet but uh, the, the code is there already um, yeah it's, it's really dedicated for that so my, my view would be put it on such a dedicated platform and in a new project we're now also uh, extending it that it can be uh, hosted to 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 other to to big uh, collection platforms big big uh, repositories open uh, educational repositories so that it can be harvested by uh, uh, open um, uh, anatomical or no open OI PMH some kind of uh, standard for 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 harvesting so that it's not only on one platform that but that it can spread to other platforms um, and I think a, a good uh, business model might be because from is always a business model uh, you can put it up there but you must maintain it you must host it etc um, I think one of the business models might be um, uh, that you also, besides having it on the web, uh, you print it in a book because from uh, uh, um, uh, uh, presentations that I saw and research that I saw, um, I, I learned that students, they, they, they like the online, but 40 to 60 percent of the students, they also uh, would like, if possible, to have a printed uh, version, especially if that's not as expensive as the, the present day uh, atlases. So even if it's free to, to take there, if you can get a nice printed version that you can take along to your dissection room or, or, or writing, I think there's a, 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 a need for that. And that might also uh, offer a way of uh, funding. Um, then the last thing, collaborations. Uh, yeah, you already mentioned Wikipedia. This is the pl platform that, that, that we have, a project. We also have a new project uh, there for exactly for creating uh, uh, anatomical images. So I think it, 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 if we could collaborate work together, extend with the OEC uh, project, then that, that would be yeah, exactly the, the idea. And um, yeah, we also got a suggestion from the anatomical societies. I think if you can work together with them, that also gives a larger uh, feedback. Just to give you, and that's, that's my finishing off, what we already did in this project. Um, so in two categories of images, so the, the graphical plastical and the high quality image, we um, yeah, already started uh, by making uh, 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 images um, uh, in the high quality uh, field. You must think that these images are a thousand euros uh, per image, more or less. Uh, we got a little grant to make some 10 to 15 images. Uh, we did an international contest, selected uh, uh, an artist from Switzerland. Um, we had 25 contestants, uh, made them a test, uh, and then we selected this one. And she's now busy with, and the first images are there open with a creative license uh, on the web. And the second was a present a project that's just started this month, a project two, two years, also with a grant of the uh, Dutch um, Ministry of Education and with a couple of uh, anatomical uh, departments in the Netherlands and Fl Flanders. Um, we're going to open up the, the, the collection of uh, uh, the, actually the lifetime oeuvre of a renowned a uh, retired Dutch medical illustrator who's uh, wishing to, uh, to to release his uh, images under a Creative Commons license. And uh, so we're going to organize that and put it out there on the web that will be a couple of hundreds of open images. Um, so I think it's, it's, it, it would be great in this project of making that if we would already also get the, the Open Educational Consortium people in there say, okay, I want this image uh, I need it and there's money to, um, yeah, to, to get it adapted. So uh, either the Dutch universities can say, okay, um, we need this, this, this image in our teaching, but if the Dutch universities are, are lazy and if there's another university somewhere in the world and says, oh, that image looks great to me, but I just want a stomach added or I want a blood vessel added, um, then there is some money and we can have it done and available with the criterion that it must be, of course, published under Creative Commons license. So my, 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 my takeaway, thank you for all the time. Uh, let's do it. And my, my experience is that teachers always ask, oh, can I use that image? And then usually have to say, no, no, it's copyrighted. But I hope to get to the point that we can say yes. So <laughs> thank you for, for giving me this, this platform, uh, Paul. And um, I'm, I'm very interested in uh, other people's uh, response to this. 
Yeah, thank you so much, Paul. I appreciate the preparation and the prior work and also mostly, and maybe you could stop sharing your screen and we'll see if there's others that want to say something, but also just the enthusiasm, Paul. It's just wonderful and infectious. I, I love it. So, um, and I, I wanted to mention something that you, I didn't say earlier that my, is, was interesting for me. And that was that, um, especially for this project, the anatomical atlas project. Um, interestingly, some of the participants expressed interest in the other two pilot projects as well. So, so what the, 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 the basic idea was that, well, uh, if we're going to engage uh, some people at our institution in doing open anatomical atlas work, maybe they, once we have some acquired expertise, we would do a fellowship exchange and invite others to come and learn from us or or in your case maybe someone would come and learn from you and be able to then do better work on their own open anatomical atlas contribution so there's the idea of potentially including a fellowship exchange component into the open anatomical atlas work and similarly uh, for oer translation so as you can imagine uh, the open anatomical atlas imagery would be super useful everywhere around the world and so but but not always in English <laughs> although frequently that t topic I think is primarily taught in English but still I think there's some interest in seeing the outputs coming out of that project be not just in English but in other languages as well so you, so for me of the three pilot projects what was interesting was that the open anatomical atlas one some people saw that there was an interrelationship between the other two pilot projects um, and that would enrich the overall project for the anatomy. What I just uh, uh, missed in your talk, uh, this, this hosting thing, who is going to pay for that if somebody a from place A goes to place B? Well, so the, yes, yeah, so, well, so I should say that the pilot project is exactly uh, intended to solve that question, <laughs> you know, exactly how would it work? Um, rather than predefine an approach ourselves, what we thought we would do is say, who's interested in, in a fellowship exchange? And now, now that we have people that are interested, let's work together to define a model for how that would work. Um, the, the template that I shared um, from the Open Asian Universities, their model is roughly like this the person who's going on the exchange to receive the knowledge transfer pays for the process you know, pays for their costs to go to be at the host university uh, but the host university pays them a stipend associated with the time that they invest in in doing work at that university so you could imagine it almost like um, a, a, a small amount of money being paid to someone temporarily to be working for you on your project. So there's a little bit of money on both sides, but clearly the person receiving the knowledge bears the primary costs of actually traveling, living, and eating, and, and being in a different country for a period of time. And the period of time uh, also is something that can vary. You know, how long should it be? How long would it take? Um, these are all things to be defined by that pilot project as part of what they move forward with in terms of a, a fellowship exchange recommendation. So, and exchange uh, content is on how to create open educational resources. Uh, is that correct? It could be on a variety of topics, Paul. Um, for example, uh, the group here in British Columbia that I'm uh, familiar with have a lot of expertise in in authoring open textbooks okay. you know multiple faculty working together to create a textbook so they have a lot of expertise in that and they're interested in hosting others who want to author open textbooks but have never done that before and so you could imagine a fellowship exchange just on that topic but the number of possible topics is large right it could be Oh, we're an expert in open education policy and we'll host someone who needs to learn how to do open education policy for an exchange. So that's the basic concept is that the fellowship exchange is around knowledge transfer of expertise from one body to another. 
Well, that was so. Any uh, so, Mike has shared some stuff. If you haven't been in chat yet, um, Paul, I encourage you to click on the chat um, option to yeah. see the link to Wikipedia that Mike shared, and he's obviously also connected to Lisa Lee at the VMD, yeah. um, which is great to see. I, I was pleased to see that in some ways, uh, many of the people who responded to this pilot already seemed to know each other and, and felt like a, a team was being formed through this initiative, which is great to see. And I hope we attract more people as it goes forward. And I really appreciate, um, Paul, the, the structure that you've proposed makes a lot of sense to me. Um, and I, I think that as others begin to engage, it'll be interesting to see whether we can kind of get everyone um, going in the same direction um, uh, with a plan, either your plan, which you've mapped out beautifully, or with a, you know, a shaped plan that others have contributed to. Um, I'm just wondering whether there are any other comments or questions from the other participants here. Um, so Mike is wondering whether anyone is attending IFAA 2019 in London. I won't be, but maybe you are, Paul? I will probably, there's chances that I will be uh, there, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was invited to submit a symposium proposal on social media use in anatomy education. So we'll see where that goes. I think those are due at the end of the year in December. Yeah. Okay. We'll see. Great. Good Hi, Mike, you. what do you think of the, of the, uh, the things I, I suggested? Yeah, so I'm most interested in the Atlas and I see the need. I think it fills a gap and I, yeah, I'm just interested in how someone like me, I'm an assistant professor at a medical campus. So I didn't, when I saw the anatomy atlas, I thought it was only of cadaveric photos. And so I have tons of line drawings that I make in Adobe Illustrator that are on the um, end of the spectrum. That's the simplified schematic. Mm -hmm. So I would be happy to, um, share some of those and kind of see how they could be a contribution because for me i think i'm the type of participant that does not have the you know the the saying in america the bandwidth to jump on and contribute to this project in a big way but if i have materials that i can contribute that i own that i created that's where my interest lies so that's why i'm here i want to kind of see if that works what that looks like that's great mike thanks I think um, uh, um, all anatomists, nearly all anatomists, don't have that bandwidth. We're all, in fact, small uh, people um, in our own department. With, as usual, anatomy departments have little funds, very little funds. Um, but I think by collaborating, the thing that that we can offer is our knowledge. And um, if we could attract some funding. Um, for artists, then and we can uh, 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 dedicate some some uh, time to, to to coach and review the images. Then that's that that knowledge is 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 the vital thing. And I think all all our small anatomy teachers, but if you have lots of them, uh, you can come you can come far. Thanks a lot, Paul. And I, I see, I'm just looking at the list of participants and I see Werner Vesterman is here and he, I don't know, Werner, if you have your microphone working, but uh, if you do, I welcome you saying some words about your interest, which was primarily in the other two pilot projects, not this one. So Werner, if you are able to speak, I encourage you to share with us some of the work you're doing around OER translation and or your interest in the fellowship exchange. So just see if you're able to. <laughs> I don't see, it doesn't look like he has his microphone on, so. Yeah, exactly, I don't think he's listening. Okay, <laughs> thanks Marcel. <laughs> just was trying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's there. He's there. He's, he's yeah, he's, uh, it's part of the webinar, but not able to speak, I think, mm -hmm. is what's happening. Exactly. All right, well, any, so any last remarks from anyone? Um, 
I'm, I'm delighted to see the high level of interest in the anatomy one, but I think the other ones have merit as well. And, and I really hope all three move forward. Um, I think we're there at the table wanting to help, uh, but it'll take collective effort. Mm -hmm. um, oh, that'd be great, Mike. If you drop some schematic examples into the Slack channel, I think that will be fantastic. And, and when you do that, if you could say something that encourages others to share things that they might already have, uh, I think that'd be really great because my sense of things, because uh, I've heard email from different people as well, is that there are lots of other people like you who've, who've, been, who've seen this need and you know, started to create something on their own, but no one else knows about it other than them. They use it for their own teaching, but not uh, in, in association with others. And so I think um, the, you know, the larger the collection of resources we can amass, the, the better things will be. Thank you so much. I, yeah, I have a comment. This is Una um, Daly from CCCOER. And I wonder if there might be an opportunity to um, involve students at medical schools. And I know, of course, they're extremely busy folks as well. But I know having had the um, opportunity to visit um, the University of California, Irvine's medical school, they do some very interesting projects with their students. They, uh, a, a lot of them involve social media, uh, putting together resources. Um, that are initially, um, they're projects uh, that, that eventually are shared with the community. Um, and, the, and there's prizes awarded on an annual basis for the best student project uh, related to medical uh, knowledge. And so I wonder if there might be an opportunity to bring students in as well, who, uh, you know, medical students who have the anatomical knowledge um, who could participate as well. That's a great suggestion. And I'll let Paul and I'll let Paul and Mike respond to that. Maybe Mike wants to respond first. I actually, uh, my my kids have joined me in the room here. Could you just repeat the uh, <laughs> the comment? Sorry, I missed that. No, no worries at all. Um, Thank you. I was wondering if there's an opportunity to, here to, to involve medical students. Okay, yeah. um, mm. I know that a number of medical schools here in the U.S., particularly I've had the opportunity to visit uh, UC Irvine um, Medical School, and they, their students do annual projects um, mm. around medical knowledge, which are then shared out into the community. Um, and I, this seems like an area that they, they might be interested in. And of course, UC Irvine is one of our members. Yeah, I mean, we have mentored scholarly activity projects that are capstone projects for University of Colorado. Those take more than a year, typically, and they're not always education-based. But my, yeah, I, so I don't know exactly what that would look like for um, medical students, but typically there's a small percentage of students that are really interested in contributing their knowledge. And I have a paper out recently on how medical students have contributed to a wiki, an online wiki, and basically what they did the most is they put their anatomy illustration and study resources on the wiki. So that was a, an example of that. I think it kind of sounds like what you're saying, Una, right. where they would kind of share their, their knowledge projects, so. And I guess, yeah, yeah. at UC Irvine, what they, it, it, sometimes it's a cross-discipline, so it's medical students working with students in the computer science uh, department to produce apps, medical apps that can be used. But here, you know, in this particular case, it might be working with um, the art department. Um, you know, I just, I see opportunities uh, where um, students could be involved in this kind of stuff. And obviously then um, these medical students can benefit from this and, and share it uh, within their system. So I just uh, sometimes they have a little more time and, and passion to uh, do this kind of work. Right, they have the bandwidth. <laughs> <laughs> the bandwidth, well. <laughs> I, I think they, um, uh, uh, there are some students who are very talented. Um, we did a contest also, and we got one student had beautiful uh, images um, that he made. Um, mm. But to make large amounts and and really to to get a comprehensive, I think it, it's more in 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 
the, the extras, little projects, side projects, and the, the, the let's say, the, the, the level one and level two imagery. I think they can do great in that, but um, my feeling is that, but that's maybe I'm, I'm too and I think that I think uh, that's fine. The, the, top, the top level one is, is, is the most needed one, and there you really need an artist because it's also, it, it takes me hours and hours as an anatomist to check if something is correct. I really have to, to research it, and it takes the, the artist hours and hours to make it. So it's, it's really not easy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think having students participate, whether they're uh, reviewers, uh, assistants in some way, it's, it could be very helpful towards their education. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah, and I don't see them leading the project, but um, but par participants. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's 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 great to to involve them because they also can say what's most useful for them, uh, how they like it. Uh, I know actually of a there's a book. Uh, a medical book uh, written by students in two years, uh, just taking all, all the lecture uh, uh, notes together and 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 uh, drawing all kinds of doctors together with it. So, I think they can 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 do do, do be very useful. Um, but maybe yeah, but for for certain uh, <laughs> yes. departments. Yeah, yeah. I like the idea of, of kind of having. Um, in, in if we if there was an approach that engaged students the you know your your idea paul of needing to have an anatomist review the illustration work of a person who's creating an image it seems to me like if there was student involvement uh, kind of like una suggesting it'd be interesting to involve art students who have requirements around showing their and developing their skills in terms of creating imagery, maybe just for the first two levels, like you suggested, but then pairing them up with, um, with students studying anatomy to have the review of the work being done by the other art students be uh, ensured in terms of accuracy. That, Anyways, that's that's a fun idea. a very good idea, uh, yeah. because the reviewing takes a lot of time. So if you have a, uh, a first review being done by students, Mm. Uh, then you can save time. Yeah. yeah, that's that's a great idea. <laughs> yes, I see. Mike's posted another link. Mike, you want to talk about what you've shared? Yeah. So just uh, as things come in my mind, I'm just dropping them down. So basically, um, as uh, Una's mentioned, medical student involvement. We have a cohort of around 25 to 28 graduate students that are doing a master's degree. And we've labeled our program Modern Human Anatomy. So they get the classical training in histi histology, embryology, gross anatomy. And then they also get um, exposure to technology in terms of imaging and modeling and coding and also education. So anything that kind of is identified as a need in uh, anatom anatomical education that there's a small group of our cohort that are interested in that. And what we typically do is we farm the graduate students out to faculty as uh, PIs on projects, and they're the mentors. So I don't know who would exactly be the mentor in this situation. They typically need to be local and on site, like I could be a mentor if my involvement in this project grows, but they're so brilliant and they're just an untapped resource in many ways. So I don't know, just keep them in mind and I like it. They could be a resource. Thank you. Absolutely. Well, lots of great ideas being shared here. Um, I think maybe we'll draw things to a close at this point, but thank you so much, Mike and Paul and Una and Marcella and Werner for joining us. Um, really, really interesting discussion. I'm excited by these pilot projects and uh, really hope that they get traction and that we can show how it's possible to collaborate across countries and and time zones and that there's a collective need and will to create some open resources for for supporting these pilot projects. Thanks so much to all of you. And um, with that, I'm gonna stop the recording and say goodbye and wish you all well. I'll see you all in the Slack channels. Can I just ask a question? Yeah, of course. Um, I, I guess you have a further plans my came to my mind make a, a next meeting uh, try to to get in more people from these universities that have 
totally. uh, uh, expressed interest and try to make uh, a, a real agreement. Okay, what are we going to do? Really get started. But I guess you have experience on what's the best way to do that. But my my, my fingers are are. are <laughs> You're ready to go. <laughs> yeah, the, the, I'm glad. My, my, my time is limited, so I'm always of course yeah. more, more ideas and, and wishes than I can realize. Yeah, I think that's true for everyone, Paul. And so, yeah, I guess uh, here's my feeling about it. I'll just say what my thinking and plan is. Um, done a little bit of legwork to help kind of make this happen, bring people together, get the concept on the table, fleshed out, show who's interested provide some channels for there to be dialogue and discussion. I'd love to see some dialogue and discussion happen in those channels because that doesn't take a lot of effort, but it shows that there's commitment and interest and motivation to proceed. And a significant um, piece from my point of view is that that dialogue and discussion be focused on a plan. What is the plan? <laughs> what is it we're gonna to try to do together? And uh, let's come up with uh, something that scopes that out and defines it in a way that everyone agrees. I think that at some point, Paul, I, I think there's a need for virtual meeting among participants for each pilot separately to kind of move forward with those. And so, but, but rather than me schedule them all, I'm looking for the desire to come from the participants. I'm here to help make it happen and I'll play a lead role in supporting it. Um, but I don't wanna say, today we're gonna to have a meeting and then not have anyone show up. Um, and so I think that the motivation has to come from the participants and I'm looking to see that motivation be expressed uh, virtually in the Slack channels first. And then uh, when, when people feel like it's time for us to get together and really formulate a real plan and we need to use a virtual means to do that, then I'm here to help make that happen. I also think at some point, if these things start to get legs and, and really, you know, people are engaged, I do think that there'll be opportunities to find funding for these, Paul. And a piece of funding that I think would need to be found is something that would bring together, let's say, all the people involved and interested in the open anatomical atlas to meet face to face and to have a planning session for a couple of days that maps out in detail what the project will entail and who's gonna do what. And, and, and I think that, that that could be a plan about moving forward on doing the Open Anatomical Atlas just collaboratively. It could also be a meeting that is bringing people together to formulate an application for a large amount of funding that they want to put forward to some uh, potential funder. And so I, I think that all of those things are possible and doable and I want to see them happen. Um, but I can't make them happen on my own. I have to rely on, you know, the people who are expressing interest in, in showing that they really are interested. For me, the hard part, Paul, is about breaking people out of the silo of their own little initiative, right? Everyone's got their own little thing going within their own institution that has been able to make a certain amount of progress. But I really think that uh, your idea, for example, is a big idea that cannot be accomplished in that way. And so I'm looking for people to acknowledge that and to say, well, I really buy into the big idea and I am going to actually provide some bandwidth <laughs> in contribution toward it. And then we will uh, try to amplify that and bring more and more people on and bring uh, bring some momentum forward and help make it happen. Maybe um, um, uh, Mike uh, mentioned the IFAA, that's the International Federation of Association of Anatomists, that's the overarching um, uh, organization of anatomical associations and it will be in London 2019. Um, it's hosted by the Imperial College. I, I'm connected to the person who, or I know, I spoke to the person who did that. Uh, Mike, would it be a good idea if we would uh, as you mentioned, a face-to-face -face meeting to try to uh, make a side uh, an extra day uh, before or a pre or, or a post conference to 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 invite people to to have a meeting there. That's a great idea. Good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Let's propose that in the Slack channel. Yeah. 
maybe um, maybe I think if we uh, because there's also some time because everybody's busy I know time flies so that that's that there's still some time till to that to set it up um, uh, then I say it would be great if we have with a couple of anatomists that we uh, pr um, propose that to to the organization so that it can be a side-by-side -side, uh, uh, meeting would, would you be uh, willing to, to to share in that uh, Mike such an initiative to, to, to organize such an extra meeting. Yeah, I mean, it all depends on whether or not my proposal gets accepted. <laughs> yeah. I, it's not the type of conference that I'll just be there anyway. I would only go, so I, I don't think we'll know until the spring, unfortunately. Yeah, we also could do uh, the AECA. Uh, I've got, uh, actually, I'm, I'm uh, talking with the anatomist from the AECA each, each two weeks on, on a video conference, so. Um, we might also um, uh, try try to uh, join in there. That's that's easier for the net for the uh, American people. Um, now I will say what is most easiest for this American anatomist is the the triple A meeting in April in Orlando, Florida. So I will be there, and I could represent the project there and get to talking on the forum for the triple A American Association of Anatomists, and yeah. Uh, the, the, um, that's possible. Uh, I always have the impression that the AAA is more, uh, the AAA is more research based, and the AACA is more education uh, oriented. So, AAA has an education journal, though, that has pretty that's good right. impact factor. So, that that might be a perception that should change or could change, but yeah, it, it's there. Yeah, but I, yeah, so. That, that's fine if if we do that. I don't have that connections with the with the triple A. Actually, I'm I'm a member, but um, yeah. So yeah, we could maybe could could do different different things in in in, in conjoint, both the IFAA, which is in Europe, and triple uh, A in America or so. So then you have different uh, continents because it's always in, in the European conferences, the European people come more and in the American conferences, logically the American people uh, come more because of the, the cost of traveling. That makes a lot of sense to me, Paul. I mean, I think that um, when there are opportunities like those convenings, it, it seems appropriate if there are participants in this initiative uh, that could, you know, kind of, talk about what they're doing, what this initiative is all about and attract others who are interested, that would, that would be fantastic. And I think that there's sort of, in my view, there's, there's sort of the, those opportunities to kind of promote this work is, is one strand of thing, but then the other strand of thing is really around the people who are part of the project meeting to formulate a plan and you know determine uh, the go forward process that everyone will want to engage in, and so there's those are kind of two slightly different activities. One is promotion and trying to attract more people, and another is the group itself meeting to kind of plan and go after funding and so on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Actually, uh, I, I won't be able to take the lead in April because that's just my my most peak. <laughs> uh, sure. So, um, when is IFAA? What's the date for it? That's a good question. Do you know that, Mike? Isn't it in middle of the year or so? The date for IFAA is August nine, August nine, something like that. Um, yeah, uh, August nine, ten, eleven. Oh. Yeah. So that's nearly a year still. Okay, well, well, hopefully we'll make some progress before then. You're, you're active in the AAA, Mike, I understand. Yeah, AAA, yeah. Active uh, that will be in April. Yeah. I think it's good to, to um, that it stays a, 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 a multi-continent uh, initiative. So um, the American associations are, are, are indeed worldwide, but I think there, it's 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 good to have both sides of the pond uh, involved. <laughs> yes. Sure. 
So I, I, I'm, I'm not, I don't know completely how, um, yeah, it's, it's best to have people at one moment at, together and, and then, then to start off. Um, yeah. Agreed. Yeah. I don't know which, which one would <laughs> be the, the best. Uh, the, I know which was best for me, but not which one is for general for yeah. people. We might, we might post that in the, in, in the Slack uh, channel, maybe. Yeah, I, I encourage you to do that. I think that that's, that's the kind of thing, uh, Paul, that I, that I am imagining being put forward in the Slack channel and there being some dialogue and discussion and maybe, maybe both happen, right? But with slightly different people. And, and uh, I think that um, that kind of process will be really useful. The more dialogue and discussion that happens in the channels, the, the more activity there is and the, the more progress I think will be made. So I really encourage that to happen. Hey, well, super nice to meet you both. Uh, and thank you so much, Paul, for preparing a bit of material to share. It was really fantastic. Uh, so exciting, uh, the work that you're doing and wanting to do with others. And uh, I'm, I'm really pleased to have Open Education Consortia also here helping to make it happen and uh, we'll continue to work with all of you to s sort of make some progress. Thank you very much from right. my side for <laughs> okay. giving us the, the trust to uh, make it a pilot project. And um, I think anatomists are, are very, very busy, so you can be busy sure. with weeks, not, not responding, but that doesn't mean that it's off the radar and uh, it's a long-term goal that I definitely know there will be a need uh, for. I thank agree. You. Thank you. Yeah. Well, thank you all. I'll say goodbye um, until next time, and I'll see you in the Slack channels. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.